want, want more power. And what happened was, after the Civil War, we had the Civil Rights Amendments, 13, 14, and 15. The 14th is about the equal protection and due process for African American men, spelled out here as persons. Look, there's that word again, person. Okay? And the corporations went, this is it. The first 20 years after this law passed, this amendment, there were 307 cases brought under the 14th Amendment, 19 by African American men, 288 by corporations trying to get equal protection. And in 1886, the Supreme Court came and it granted equal protection for corporations. In this case, it was a railroad corporation, uh, Southern Pacific Railroad. What this did, was it gave our corporate person they effectively stole the flag, okay? And it gave them access to rights that we the people have. So let me just show what this did. It reallocated power instantly. It took the little corporate person here now with the flag, because the flag of human rights, and it shifted it to we the people side. So now corporations are private. Can we access their books? No. You know, this has allowed the consolidation of power and wealth that we see now, that 1886 ruling. And unfortunately, what's happened is corporations have been, with these illegitimate human rights, they have, are now trumping our voice and our power in Congress, <coughs> everywhere, in the legal system. Basically, this began the blurring of democracy and capitalism, and this led people like Charlie Wilson, in uh, 1953, to say, our, um, what's good for our country is good for General Motors and vice versa. You know, and we believed that. We, had this, we were no longer wary of corporations, we were wary of big government. What we need is protection from corporations, not protection for them. Okay. <laughs> Because they were afraid they would be sued by Exxon. 
So how did I publish it? I mortgaged my home to publish Sound Truth for Spoken Word. So um, 